there's some rumours going around that if Brock Lesnar was to come back, you and Brock would be the, the fight know. to make there. I mean, I have you, is that, that even of any consideration? I'd do it in a heartbeat, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's that's a fight that would get mainstream America excited, and I want to, to have a fight like that. I want to be a part of something like that. UFC 214, Cormier versus Jones 2, and I am joined by arguably one of the best fighters of all time, John Jones, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us here at BT Sport. It's good to be here with you. In watching how he's evolved as a fighter and his four fights since you last fought one another, have you changed your preparation for him each time based on anything you've seen that's, that's changed within him and his fighting? No, I haven't. You know, I have changed my preparation, but it, it's been more based on me um, developing as an athlete um, and, and just finding new openings and, and new uh, options of you know paths to the victory. Uh, I haven't really done it based on his performances. I feel like he's been performing the same way for a while now. I don't think uh, he's really um, altered his game very much, but I do see that his his, uh, his experience is getting better. But as far as the actual tactics, I don't feel like there's been much of a change in his game. And as well as the jiu-jitsu, wrestling is, is clearly going to be a, a, a portion, if you like, of, of this fight. I mean, Daniel Cormier, you could say, is probably the, the toughest wrestler you'd, you'd come up against, but you managed to, to take him down in those later rounds. Now, of course, he is now more used to five-round fights, but do you feel it's something you can implement again? Have you been working on, on the wrestling specifically too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it was great to be able to take Daniel yeah. down in our first fight. Uh, I think it was about four times. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I got him down in total. And, you think, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was four times. It was exactly four times. Well, I, I actually say five times because I took him down in the MGM Grand Lobby. Uh, so that, we uh, all remember that one very <laughs> yeah, well, so yeah. We're five. I think we can count that. <laughs> no, I guess it's not officially. Count, huh? Well, that's the physical side of things. Mentally, I mean, you've been through a journey, and we won't get into the details. People know the story, but the times that it's nearly happened, and then for whatever reason it hasn't, I mean, mentally that takes it's toll on you, you know, you're in the peak of your career, you're 30 years old now, and in that period of time, you're seeing somebody with what you call your belt continuing to go on and defend that title themselves. How much of a challenge has this been for you in your mind mm. to get back to this point now where you're going through another fight week to go out there and get yeah. your belt back? It's, uh, it's, been, it's been quite the challenge, you know, to kind of have your career get derailed by, you know, just doing dumb stuff, you know. Um, it's been a challenge, you know, but you have to just realize that you put yourself in this position and you owe it to yourself to get yourself out of it. You know, a lot of times when people are, are down, they feel like they're out of the race. And, and I'm grateful to, to be able to realize that you're never out, right? Mm -hmm. There's always tomorrow, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, basically, you know, I had to pull my head on my butt and, um, and just get back on my horse and, and get back to where we're at today. And, Were there any uh, points where you thought, it's too far gone in terms of, you know, things were, were snowballing, if you like, in yeah. terms of just one thing after another derailing the situation or your comeback. Were there any sort of low points where you thought, am I going to get the trust of people back? Am I going right. to get the best of myself out again? Right. Um, you know, um, I would say there was a part where I considered, you know, maybe giving the sport up and, and trying mm -hmm. something like a fresh start, mm -hmm. a different profession, you know. Um, and then uh, I think when I watched Daniel Cormier fight against Anthony Johnson for the title. Uh, the first time or the? The first time yeah. is when I realized, okay, I'm wasting my potential and I need to get back out there. And so uh, that's when I started doing powerlifting and doing jujitsu and, um, and just changing my circle. And, uh, and it, it all worked out. And, yeah. you know, it's been like two years since, since all the craziness. Yeah. And... Uh, and now I'm back here and I'm just super, super grateful to be back in this position to fight for a world title and to be able to represent the UFC brand again and, and uh, my intentions, because I believe uh, there's super power in having intentions. My intentions uh, is just to uh, remind the fans of, of, you know, why I'm a fan favorite in the first place, you know, remind them about, you know, what I'm capable of doing inside of the octagon and um, get the fans excited again, like really excited right now. I feel like the UFC is lacking some stars. You know, I feel like there's really just me, Conor McGregor, as far as the, the main draws in the sport right now. You haven't even wanted to get into a fight with Daniel, or like a verbal yeah, right. warfare. You've almost wanted to say, let's get professional, let's talk. Is that something you decided before coming out this week or, or you just got to that point where fighting's the only thing left to do? Um, yeah, you, you hit it on the nail. Fighting is the only thing left to do at this point. I mean, 
there's always selling the fight and, and you can, you know, you can make some big headline comments and statements and things like that. But bickering back and forth with him is just so pointless at this point. It's like, oh, you know, you're, you're punk. Oh, you suck. Oh, no, you suck. You it's know, been you done. Suck. Yeah, you know what I mean? We're both adult men. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, bro. It's like, you know, I think we've both been classless enough. We both kind of put ourselves out there trying to insult each other. And, uh, and at, right now in my life, I'm ready to get back to the martial arts side of things and, and, uh, and not be side distracted, uh, side, you know, distracted or whatever by just uh, the narrative, you know. Yeah. I'm just ready to, to, uh, to remind people of who I really am. Do you think people need reminding? Do you think your, what you've done in the sport has been not forgotten, but you, you feel people need that reminder? I think, I think the sport's grown tremendously yeah. uh, over the last two years. I've been very inactive over the last two years. So I think there's a lot of new fans that aren't sure, you know, what's this John Jones guy all about. And is ring rust a real thing? I mean, you've been busy training, but you haven't been fighting. Do you feel that it might take you that first round, there'd be a feeling out process, or, or do you see this coming out hard from the gate? I think, I don't, I don't really, I don't believe in ring rust too much. I mean, when you're fighting a guy that you don't get to practice against every day, there's always gonna be a filling out process. Um, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue, no. I mean, Dominic Cruz is a guy who, uh, he was injured like four years in a row and he came back and won a world title his first fight back. And, uh, and one of his quotes was, ring rust is a mindset. And that was just so inspiring to hear. And, uh, and I embrace that. I think ring rust is a mindset. I, I, I choose to look at this time off as, as an advantage instead of a disadvantage, right? Because everything's perspective. And so, um, you know, instead of saying, oh man, it's been so long, and blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking more, you know what? I haven't been punched in the face in almost two years. <laughs> Zoe and St. Prue couldn't touch me, right? Um, I have been preserving my body. I have been able to center myself. I've been able to reevaluate who I am as a person, as an athlete. Like, there's been so much good that's come out of this time off, you know, being so young getting thrusted into the limelight and, and millions of dollars in fame at age 23, and, you know, you can lose yourself if, if you aren't prepared for it. And this last two years, I've really had the opportunities just to step back and, and become a fan of the sport and, and look at who I was in the sport and develop a greater appreciation. And, uh, and now I train and I treat myself um, as if I'm a person who appreciates the position that I'm in. And so, so I feel like it's been nothing but a positive thing for me to be away from the sport for a while. Well, we can feel that sort of with what, with what you're saying. Thanks. Say Saturday night, you get your belt back. You're reinstated as no, UFC no, champion. No, say Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night, I'm going to get my belt back. When you get your belt back Saturday night. There you go. Um, we have a, a, a British fighter like heavyweight Jimmy Manor, who's also on this card, fighting nice. Vulcan Ozdemir. Um, he is potentially next in line for a title shot. Do you know much about Jimmy? Have you, you, you I, seen any of his fights? Any I, thoughts on fighting him next? I watched uh, his last fight. I've only seen him, I've seen two of his fights. I watched him get knocked out by Gustafsson. And then I watched him catch Corey Anderson. I yeah, think, knocked with, out Corey Anderson. With the left hook, right? Mm -hmm. That was impressive. Um, my job is to, to fight the baddest guy on the planet. And like I said, I started doing that when I was a 23 year old kid. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of something inside to be able to do that and to, to honestly feel like no other guy matches up in this world one-on-one -on -one with me. And uh, so if he's the guy who's next, then so be it. That's the one. And any more thoughts um, about potentially going up to the heavyweight division? You've said at various points you'd like to be a two-weight class world champion. And there's some rumors going around that if Brock Lesnar was to come back, you and Brock would be the, the fight know. to make there. I mean, I have you, is that, that even of any consideration? I'd do it in a heartbeat, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's that's a fight that would get mainstream America excited, and I want to to have a fight like that. I want to be a part of something like that. Yeah, that'd be an awesome fight. It'd be it'd be tremendous for uh, our sport, and I'm sure. I mean, so many people. It would be it would be <laughs> it'd be a super fight. That'd be and pretty. And cool. I've always wanted to be a part of a super fight. So that'd be awesome. Talking of fighting legends, um, just one last thing I wanted to ask was you had a phone call from Anderson Silva, another great within mm -hmm. our sport. Um, share with us what, what he said to you or, or the gist of, of that encouragement that I understand he gave you. You know, he, he basically just called to say, hey man, I'm so proud of you for you know, the fight that you're in and, you know, in life and, and, 
and the things you've done in the octagon, and and basically he was he was trying to pass the torch, basically saying, mm -hmm. like I believe, but you're the best right now, and I couldn't accept it from him. It was literally we were on the phone for like five minutes, going, oh, you're the best, no, you're the best, <laughs> no, you're the best, and and uh, it was awesome, man, because it's like when you when you work so hard that your idols become your friends and your peers, it's like that's when you know something went right in your life, you know. And to have Anderson calling me to, to just encourage me, it was, it was tremendous feeling. And uh, I was like, I was glowing for like ten minutes after the phone call. I was, I was just so, uh, I was a fanboy, dude. I was like just so proud and so, and, you know, it was just great. Um, and, and then we talked about DC a little bit too, and, and we kind of talked about some things that that could work on him and, you know, some ideas and things like that. And, and uh, I mean, you know, the thing that stood out the most was just saying, Daniel has a lot of fear in his heart. He, he said, I'm, a, I'm an old man. And he was so afraid to strike with me. I could just feel the fear and, and pretty much saying that he wished that he would have pulled the trigger more. Um, and he just said, John, the fight's already yours. You just gotta go out there, be happy, fight with love, be an artist, mm -hmm. and everything's gonna be okay. Well, it's great to have you back. Just Thank one you. last thing, just tell our UK fans what they can look forward to seeing from John Jones on Saturday night. Well, hello, mates. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm John. No, I'm joking. I love you guys' accent. I know, was it? Let me see, let me try again. Hello, governor. All right? No, I'm joking. Terrible. Feel yeah. Bad. Sorry, guys. In your voice, I think it's fine. Sorry. <laughs> um, UK fans, God bless you all. Uh, thanks for all the, the years of support, the staying up to four o'clock in the morning to watch the fights. I, I, I realize that and I, I think it's so awesome. Um, been to the UK quite a few times. You guys are some of the most passionate fans I've ever met. And uh, thank you guys for just helping lift the name of the UFC up higher. And uh, I'm excited to be back here. I promise to do my best and keep me in your prayers. We're excited to have you back. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much.